Hello dear students, hope you are all safe and doing well. Well, this is a class of biology, specifically of zoology portion for your higher secondary first year. Now, you might be aware that the Assam Higher Secondary Education Council has provided a new syllabus actually a reduced syllabus uh, because of the COVID pandemic this year. You did not follow the complete syllabus which is there in the book, but this syllabus which has been provided by the council has got many topics omitted for this year only. In line with the new guidelines and the syllabus that we have now, here is a very interesting topic which is in your unit 3 chapter 9 and 10 and it comes under cell structure and function well friends I would like to tell you that there would be many subclasses under this topic and for today what we are going to understand is the cell cycle now the question arises, are we aware of the cell? And then what is a cell cycle? Well friends, a cell is the unit of life as it is said that it is a structural and functional unit of life. Now I'll give you an analogy. You have seen the construction of a building and you have also seen the brick. Well, brick after brick, a building is completed or it develops. Likewise, cell after cell, the accumulation of cell and the modifications of the cell creates the organism from a unicellular embryo into a full-grown adult, which is multicellular. Of course, I am talking about the multicellular organisms here. But even in unicellular organisms, we have the division of cell and therefore the pertinent question of cell cycle also occur in their case. As we all know that we grow, we function physiologically and the totality of the function is expressed in term of life or the living system. So for a cell to divide from 1 to 2, from 2 to 4 and so on, it has to follow certain rules or it does follow certain rules which we are going to understand. Now we have understood from the studies of cell biology that the cell undergoes a sequence of events of duplicating itself not only in its outer structure but also in its components of all those things that it has including the genomic components. Now the division of the cell results in the formation of two identical cells often known as the daughter cells because the mother cell if you can call it so has just become two but they are exactly the mirror copy of each other and also similar with what was the mother now in the cell cycle the cell growth is there in terms of cytoplasmic increase there is also the process of synthesis of components, synthesis of DNA and the organelles and the required enzymatic machinery that is required for the cell to have before it can become two. It is something like dividing all the components at your disposal into two equal halves and then making a partition so that they become two compartments. 
Now, the cell cycle is a very uh, varied item as much as its time requirement is concerned. Well, it can take as little as 90 minutes or as we know in the human ova, the entire cell cycle which also includes the M phase may be completed in about 40-45 years. Now that in details you would learn later but at this point when you are venturing into the study of cell per se and the concept of cell cycle we need to understand that the complete cell cycle is a varied affair with varied time period. Now, the cell cycle has got two important parts, the interphase and the divisional phase. You can see in the chart that the interphase, which are shaded part in blues and violet, takes the maximum time. While the divisional phase, which is also known as the M phase, is but a small portion of the total cell cycle. Yes, it is, it is about more than 90% of its time is the interphase. And sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that the cell is resting. No, it's not resting. It is absolutely in full physiological function. But it is actually preparing for the time when it has to undergo a division so that it can become two cells. Because unless cell grow, unless cell multiply, we don't grow. The dead cell cannot be repaired. The dead cells cannot be renewed. And the young ones won't grow to adult stage. Even when we are adult, we are losing dead cells constantly. Our skin, nails, hair and all the internal organs repeatedly shed cells, our blood cells. New ones are born, old ones die. So there is a necessity of the cell to multiply and for multiplication it has to obey the rules of the cell cycle. Now, as I was just discussing with you, that the cell cycle has got its different phases. Now, most specifically in this diagram, you can see that there is a phase called the G1 or the growth phase or also known as the gap phase 1. The gap phase 1 is followed by one of the largest phase of interphase, which is known as the S phase or the synthetic phase. This is the phase where the actual synthesis of DNA occurs. Now that is followed by the G2 phase, which is actually a preparatory phase where the cell completes is its accumulation of components and gets ready to enter into the divisional phase or the M phase. Now the center of the diagram, you can see that there is a circular arrow which is interface and then there is a small portion which is cell division. The cell division is a continuous process but for our convenience for the sake of learning we have divided into four major parts and we call them the prophase, the metaphase, the anaphase and the telophase. Now once these four stages are over be it in equational division mitosis or reduction division meiosis it is followed by cytokinesis that means the physical separation or the division of the cell unless and until all the four stages of mitosis or meiosis are completed the cell will not divide physically to become two now, that being the fact, we can take the cell cycle in its part and try to understand that what are the major events that the cell is trying to do 
or is going through in order to do the fundamental work of dividing because that is one fundamental fact which makes life continue if the cells would not have divided germ cells would not have been formed if germ cells cells would not have been formed then zygotes would not have occurred and the new life process would have stopped so we can say that it is the cell cycle which is at the root of perpetuation of life and existence of life on earth is very important to understand well let us come back to interface an inter an in interface we shall now focus on the first phase or the first sub phase of interface which is the g1 phase or the growth phase 1 often called the gap phase 1 so here what is happening well it is the time period after a cell has divided from the previous cycle and the beginning of the synthetic phase which is the s phase so this is the time you have already seen in this diagram after cytokinesis it begins and ends before the s phase so three basic points you have to remember new proteins and organelles are produced now new proteins all those biochemical machineries required for the cell to perform its work in the process of division are being harnessed now the cell has certain organelles in certain numbers but when the cell is about to divide or is going to divide it has to multiply its component into twos it has to double its components otherwise it won't be able to equally divide its components into the two daughter cells so that's number 1 the chromosomes which are present in the would be dividing cell starts unwinding and we see them as chromatin fiber and at the end of that they become so thin in their most uh, thin condition they arise that they are of, they are at that point of time not visible and ultimately in the g1 phase the cell starts preparing for duplication of dna which is of course a part of the s phase but then before going into the s phase the cell and its machinery will check whether all that activities that was supposed to be done in g1 phase was done or was all those activities done properly so we call them the g1 checkpoint the cell checks for whether it is big enough whether the environment the cellular environment is optimal or favorable it checks that whether all the requirements for duplication of dna has been accumulated and also whether all the chromatins are aligned on the spindle that means all the technical necessities that would be required before the cell can synthesize or double its dna are being rechecked biochemically by the cell itself which is in a process of division or the process of undergoing division through the interphase and divisional phase so we have a g1 check okay next comes in the g1 check there is something called the g0 phase now that's something which sometimes misses our focus but is very important now i have told you that the interphase has g1 s and g2 now where is this g0 it is very much a part of the interphase but at the end of g1 as there is a g1 checkpoint there is also something called the g0 phase now what does it signify well 
there are certain cells in our body which are physiologically and biologically active but they do not want to divide continuously we are born with those cells in certain numbers and we shall die with those numbers only however if there is a necessity of repair then only they might cross over from the g0 and go into s and g2 and then proceed to divide but normally and ideally such cells keep themselves in a dormant stage where they do not go further beyond g1 and do not divide but they remain biologically and physiologically most active one of the best examples of such cells which are in g0 are the heart cells or the neurons of our brain or the neurons of the entire nervous system they do not appear to exhibit division but only occasionally when there is a need to replace or repair that's when there is something which is an emergency they do not divide after exiting g1 and they enter into a quiescent stage and we call it the g0 because that's the stage when it is sort of sleeping but active metabolically active but no longer proliferates unless called on to do so depending on the requirement so g0 is something like a parking lot the vehicles are running on the road some vehicles on getting a parking lot sides onto the parking lot and stops there do not move from the parking lot other vehicles are moving think of a road where there is a gate a parking lot and that car is being parked now it will not move unless it is required to be moved maybe the car can be there for the whole life you can keep it or if you need it and then only you can take it out from the parking so that's what is the beauty of the g0 phase but remember this phase is not for all cells this is for specific cells which have functions that are perpetual and fundamental and don't need to divide continuously now we can come to the next phase of interphase and we know that phase as the s phase or the synthetic phase now it marks the beginning for dna duplication now dna as we understand is deoxyribonucleic acid and that is the genomic constituent of all eukaryotic organisms the dna is a wonderful chemical it's a nucleic acid acidic in nature present in the nucleus and is composed of phosphates sugar moieties hydrogen bonds nitrogenous bases and it has got this beautiful capacity of duplicating itself and it duplicates itself in the very beautiful exactly the same copy of each other they just make a replica so this duplication of dna occurs in the s phase and we understand that we have this concept that in a cell the chromatin value the the chromatin is the is the is the protein or the component that the dna is made up of we call it the chromatin thread is in a 2c stage which is two double and chromatin c for chromatin and we have two n numbers of chromosome that means the chromosome number is also deployed in as in human being we have got 23 pairs that means 46 numbers of chromosomes 
but after this duplication the amount of dna that means the chromatin is doubled it becomes 4c however the chromosome number has not doubled because when the cell is in the interface we do not see the chromatin as parts and those parts are known as chromosomes we don't see them in fragments we see it as a single double linear thread now the value the 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 value of the chromatin in terms of its quantity doubles okay but it has not yet divided into 46 plus 46 92 chromosomes no it is still 46 but we are not being able to observe it but the value of the chromatin has doubled in terms of its volume in terms of its uh, weight in terms of its uh, components okay so there is no increase in the chromosome number and the cell had which has deployed or twice the number of chromosomes at G1 even after S phase it still has twice the number that's what I said just now now here what is happening in the S phase the DNA is getting doubled the picture on the right hand upper corner you can see the DNA is a double stranded structure now two double stranded structures are being formed so if I say the first double stranded structure was 2c now it is 4c yet the chromosomes the lower picture is of a chromosome which is in the sister chromatid condition but we don't see the chromatids becoming four because already there are two chromanimeters with four chromatids they should have become eight it has not become so this is what happens in the S phase. Now after the S phase, the cell enters into the G2 phase or the growth phase 2. Well, it is the shortest part of interphase and that during this phase, proteins are synthesized in preparation for the divisional phase. Well, it can be mitosis, it can be meiosis. That is not important. It is called M phase because both mitosis and meiosis begins with the letter M. But ideally, it is the divisional phase. So, G1 phase, the requirements for synthesizing DNA, the organelles, doubling of that. In S phase, you have the actual duplication of the DNA. And then the G2 phase, you have the formation of all those required proteins that need to be readied before the cell can get into the divisional phase. Well, the cell is not going to do things arbitrarily. It is still going to see as it has done after the G1. It is going to check whether everything is perfect and was done in the way it is supposed to be with a G2 checkpoint. So in the cell cycle you have got two checkpoints one after the G1 and the other after the G2. You can see in the diagram just after the G2 phase there is a G2 checkpoint before entering M1. Now what does it check? whether DNA has been replicated properly, whether there is any damage in the DNA, whether there is a need of DNA proofreading and splicing off the wrong part and adding the right thing if there is at all such a necessity, whether the cell size, the cytoplasm, the protein and the energy required, the food component has been stored in enough quantity and whether the overall environment is conducive for the cell to undergo the division. All of this, including that the alignment of the chromosomes are on the spindle, are being checked at the G2 checkpoint. Once 
the cellular machinery is assured of the perfect state of affairs of the cell only then and then only it can proceed to the next important stage from where there is no returning let me tell you if there is a problem in g1 stage the cell will stop further proceed with the g1 check and will put the cell in g0 again if there is a problem in the g2 checkpoint the cell will go back and begin its process of recovering what has not been done but once the g2 checkpoint double checking has been done the cell now has to divide and go through the process of divisional phase you cannot stop the cell halfway and it won't come back again to g2 or s now we have just discussed the three parts of interface g1 s and g2 of course with the g1 checkpoint g0 phase and the g2 checkpoint in built in it once that is done as i said the cell is now totally duplicated it is ready to go it is ready to divide into two so that the organism can grow so it enters the m phase or the divisional phase now it is one of the most dramatic as they say of the cell cycle period because it involves major reorganization of all the components of the cell there is a division of the chromatin there is a division of the cell organelles there is a division of the uh, centro centrosome there is a division of the nucleolus everything that the cell has goes through a reorganization and recreation the number of chromosomes in the parent progeny and the cell remains the same because they have already duplicated now they divide well cell division is said to be the mere physical separation of an already duplicated cell you just mark my words what is cell division i am focusing on the divisional phase now the cell division which is the divisional phase is merely the physical separation of an already duplicated cell that means the cell is already duplicated in its component now let us put things into twos let us make things into two parts like a father would have made two houses for his two son put the same thing in the two houses and at the end of it make a may a wall in the compound so that there are two houses with two compounds similarly the mother cell readies itself have everything in duplicates and at the end of that goes through the divisional process which divides the already duplicated cell physiologically and biologically into a mechanical process of undergoing the physical separation the cell division is a continuous process but we have put the entire cell division remember it's the divisional phase i'm talking about into four consecutive stages which are the prophase metaphase anaphase and the telophase now these four phases are found as much in mitosis which is equational division that means after the end of the telophase followed by cytokinesis the cell will have identical daughter cells with equal number of chromosomes or it might be meiosis where the daughter cells will have half the number of chromosomes and we shall call them the germ cells or the reproductive cells however in both the cases cell cycle is a fundamental truth where the cell has to go through the interphase and the divisional phase 
the interface again i am reiterating is the longest portion in terms of time period consisting of the g1 s and the g2 g1 is followed by g1 checkpoint and the g0 phase if required s is when the s phase is when the actual multiplication uh, we may say replication of dna occurs and it is followed by the g2 phase which prepares the cell before entering the divisional phase but then again there is a g2 checkpoint so we are double checking that whether everything is all right now once that happens the cell is ready to go into the div divisional phase however mitosis and meiosis are different topics are separate topics in your syllabus so i shall deal with mitosis and meiosis separately today i believe we have learned what is a cell cycle and what are its parts and what are the features of cell cycle and what are the functions of cell cycle and now that we have understood this i think we are ready to go into our next stage where we shall learn about mitotic cell division which will have all those four phases pro meta ana and tilo followed by cytokinesis and then the meiotic cell division or reduction division which also has all these four phases however in a more elaborate fashion here you can see two cells dividing this is a true micrograph picture of hamster cell and you can see how they are dividing and forming from one mother cell into two daughter cell so that's what we would be learning in our next vlog thank you